This is a video tutorial in manufacturing PPE using Autoclave Safe Instrument Tray Blue Wrap. You will need a sewing machine, a rotary cutter, ruler, and basic sewing skills. The tutorial is meant for healthcare workers and their families who wish to manufacture PPE during the current scarcity. Blue Wrap is used every day in operating rooms around the country to help with the sterilization of trays. It has the advantage of being autoclavable. Gather as much as you can, you're going to be using a lot. The blue wrap comes in our institution in two layers, a blue and a white. Make sure that you keep both layers since this is going to improve the filtration ability of the mask. Here we are cutting off the fused edge to create two separate layers of blue wrap material. Eventually, we will be using this same material and technique to make the straps to tie on our masks. Make sure your measurements are careful. You're going to want to be precise. We have two sizes of mask, large masks and small. For the large masks, our current measurements are seven inches by nine and a half inches. For the small masks, the measurements are six and a half to seven inches by nine to nine and a half inches. You can be more precise if you'd like by measuring from above your nose to below your chin for the height and from ear to ear for the width. You can be more efficient by cutting multiple sheets of blue wrap at the same time. Each large sheet of blue wrap can give you up to nine masks depending on the size of mask that you manufacture. Here we have our individual mask sheets. We are going to take one combination of blue and white and fold it in half. We're going to measure and mark the midpoint of the mask on the fold. We are then going to mark one inch above and below that midpoint. At the top of the mask, we're going to measure a point one and a half inches from the fold. At the bottom of the mask, we're going to measure approximately one inch from the fold. This is to accommodate the chin. Connect the dots from the lower mark in the midline to the outer mark, both above and below, to give two triangles. We are then going to measure from the upper triangle in the fashion shown and mark across. We are going to do a similar maneuver on the bottom, although the angle on the bottom may not be as acute. Experiment with your own masks. Once marked, we're going to begin to sew. We are only going to sew the two areas at the fold of the mask, both above and below. It's important when sewing along this line that you reverse stitch both at the fold and at the bottom and top. This is going to help reinforce the mask. Here we have our previously cut one inch strips of the material. We're going to separate them. You're only going to need a half thickness for each mask. We're going to need two straps for each mask. So here with the two strips separated, we're going to have a total of four strips for a total of two masks. Set these strips aside. Now you're going to cut at all of your marks. Be careful not to cut your stitch line. Here we see one completed mask. Here we're trimming the edges on the side of the mask where the strips are going to go. This is going to make it easier to attach them. The strips should be approximately 42 to 46 inches long. Measure to the middle of the strip and secure that strip to the side of the mask. Here we're going to do it simply with clips. With the strip secured to the center of the mask, double the strip over and begin to sew. This is going to increase the strength of the strip so that it doesn't break when you try to tie it. It's also going to allow these masks to be used multiple times, 
Remember, the masks can be cleaned in an autoclave, since this material is specifically designed to tolerate the heat of an autoclave. Continue sewing until the strip is completely attached to the mask. Be careful not to come off of the side of the strip or leave gaps. Remember, as you're attaching the strip to the mask itself, to reverse as a way of ensuring that the edges where the strip meets the mask are reinforced. This will help to prevent ripping when the mask is used. Complete the closure of the strip below the mask all the way to the ends. You can also do reverse stitching at the very end once again to help reinforce these strips. And here we have the mask after placement of strips on both sides. We are now going to sew all around the mask to reinforce the mask from the sides as well as to help reinforce the strips at their points of attachment. Our plan is that these masks can and should be autoclaved and reutilized. Be sure to use cotton thread since that is known to tolerate autoclaving. In addition, we have used the smallest needle available to try to minimize the number of holes inside the mask itself. And here we have the completed mask. You can see that it's sutured all the way around. And here, as the mask is on, you can see that it covers the face well. Experiment with sizing the mask to your own size. Good luck.